Hello, we're going to attempt to use piano maps to address one of the comments that appears in Larry Fine's book about how European pianos emphasize the fundamental tone rather than the harmonics. This suggests, because of the use of the word fundamental and harmonics, that we could use spectral analysis to test this searching. I'm going to use six pianos two of which, the Busendorfer and the Schimmel, are European. Now, I'm going to use the cumulative line spectrum in 3D to illustrate this piano map, so it's perhaps a foreign concept to some of you. I'm going to have to develop it here. I'm going to look at a three-key piano. It's just hypothetical. First key is a sine wave at uh, 32.7 hertz, whatever it's C1. Second key is uh, an octave up at C2, has around 65 hertz. The third key is going to be the sum of the two keys, C1 plus C2. It's going to be a strange key. So this is the time trace for each of these three keys. Here's the line spectra. C1 has a spike at 32.7 hertz. C2 has a spike at 65 around there. And the special key has spikes at both frequencies. Here's the cumulative line spectrum of each of these sine waves. You start off at zero frequency and you move along until you reach the first and only frequency and it has all of the power at that frequency so it accumulates up to one, so a fraction one. The second sine wave you move along, you don't get any accumulation until you reach 65 hertz, at which time it accumulates to the full amount. For the special key, you run along until you reach 32.7. You accumulate half of this power, and you go on to 65 hertz, and you accumulate the rest of it. Now I'm going to plot these three cumulative line spectra in 3D. Here's the keys going along this axis. Here's the frequency along this axis, and here's the fraction of the total power. Here's the first key, comes up at 32.7. Here's the second key, comes up at 65 hertz. Here's the third key that comes up at 32 and then 65. Okay, we now should be able to look at a 3D cumulative line spectrum and perhaps understand it. Let's go on to the next one. This is our first piano. This is my Kanabi at home. And here is its cumulative line spectrum map. Notice that I have plotted the frequency along this axis in logarithmic units so that I can get a straight line as I increase on the key. In other words, the fundamental frequency for each key increases logarithmically and this therefore to be a straight line which is the red dashed line. There are some uh, transitions here that are of, no, of note. First, for example, here is where the three string keys start. It goes up like that. Here's where the double strings start. And here are the triple strings. There are about eight of them on this piano. Up here is the transition. Here's where the dampers no longer are in effect up in the tenor the treble. Here's some what I, I call this structural power for lack of a better word but the point is at, at these high this high octave here you accumulate signal power well before you reach the fundamental and then at the fundamental signal which in this case would be 4196 Hertz you accumulate about 15% but there's a lot going on before you reach the fundamental. That happens for probably the top two octaves. Now, we're going to be comparing for the other pianos the A0 and the C8. Now, here's, we already talked about the C8, which is over here. Here's the A0, see? It has no power until a, probably the third or fourth harmonic, and then it starts to accumulate power. And the single strings act in a similar manner. They don't really have any power at the fundamental or even the first harmonic, second harmonic. Note that, for example, this 
double string key actually has power at a frequency that is lower than the first frequency that shows up on the double string notes. All right, you kind of beat the Kanabi to death. Let's move on to the Yamaha console. Similar structure, three note, three string notes, keys, double string keys, triple. Uh, here's a lot of structural power below the fundamental. The A0 looks about the same as the uh, Kanabi. The C8 also looks similar. And uh, also, for example, this particular beginning of the triple string keys has power at a frequency that is actually lower than the first appearing power over here for A0. All right, let's go on to the Yamaha P120, which is a digital piano. Now this one looks a little, little bit different. Note the uh, lack of the so-called structural power below the fundamental. In other words, it, for, most of the, for the most case, the signal doesn't really come on until it reaches the fundamental. It's a nice broad cliff right here where the power comes on at the fundamental. Now here's a transition from probably the three strings on the piano from which these samples came, which supposedly is a Yamaha uh, Concert Grand. There's a transition, but then there doesn't appear to be a significant transition to the single strings. This could be it right here, but it's not like the other pianos. So I think we'll move on from this. This is a little bit different. Here's the Steinway D up at a church in Ithaca. And uh, this was built in 1911. It was rebuilt in the 90s. And uh, here's the map. A lot of power below the fundamental. For example, this A6, this C8 here doesn't really have power until the at the top 5%. Most of it's this lower frequency stuff. You got the transitions here between the double, single, triple strings. And it's pretty much the same structure. Here's the C8, similar to other pianos, except the digital. Here's the A0. Okay, let's go to the first European piano. This is the Bosendorfer. This is in uh, Cunningham's Pianos, first floor. Here's the map. Similar in structure to all the others. For example, we've got some structural power here below the fundamental. I'll talk about this, uh, this cliff right here. Nothing comes on until the fundamental, and almost all of it comes on at the fundamental. We have the transition from triple to double to single. The single, trans the single strings are not as quite clearly defined as in the other pianos. I think that's going to be it for that. Now let's go to the other European piano, the Schimmel 213, again at Cunningham's Pianos. Here is the similar plot. There is structural power here. There is a little bit less. This probably has the least of the ones of the acoustic pianos. And then it has this cliff right here, which I'll talk about later. And then it's got the transitions, triple string, double string, single string. All right. Here are all six of them. And um, you notice here the uh, digital piano shows clearly it has less of this below fundamental frequency power. Here's our uh, Model D, which is most, that top octave is in pretty bad shape, I think. Uh, here's the two European man pianos. They all ha they all have transitions. Of course, here's the only has one transition on the digital. Uh, look at the steps for starting for the triple strings. You start right here and you start to walk up to the top. Here you start the triple strings and you walk up 
little bit of a jump right there. Triple strings, walk up. Triple strings, going up. Triple strings, going up. And the same thing over here. Uh, compare A0 and C8. Quite, quite similar. The A0 comes in slowly. Almost nothing, well there is nothing, at the fundamental and maybe the first one or two uh, harmonics. Here it comes up slowly. Here the Yamaha actually comes up pretty abruptly relative to the others. Comes up slowly in the Model D. Here is the uh, Busendorfer. Busendorfer comes up slowly, slowly. Okay, so I, I think so far it's difficult to point out and say, boy, those European pianos sure do look different than those American pianos or those Asian pianos. Okay, let's take a look at one particular area. This is an area that perhaps you might argue emphasizes the fundamental over the harmonics. Here's the Busendorfer. You can see it in this particular range here we start at the fundamental and we come almost all the way up. Almost all the power is in the fundamental. Over here we start at the fundamental and we come up and we have some steps through some harmonics. So this is the only place I can see where you might argue that the, the fundamental is emphasized for the European pianos. So, conclusions. All the acoustics have a signal, significant amount of signal power in the below the uh, fundamental at the top octave. Digital doesn't. Uh, they all have clear transitions between single, double, and triple strings, except for the digital, which only shows one transition. Uh, all the pianos show that uh, when the transition at, to the triple string starts, it usually has power at frequencies lower than the lowest point where the A0 starts to show power. And I am concluding tentatively that the distribution of the signal power between the fundamental and the higher harmonics is really not significantly different for the two Euro European pianos as compared to the American and the Asian, except for that one range I pointed out. Thanks for listening and watching. Send your comments, if you have any, to me at this email address. Bye-bye.